via Zoom with the founder and co-owner of Wild North Brewing Company, Craig Wood. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing very great today. You? I'm doing fantastic. Um, so you're out there in Creston, BC, yeah. um, which has a pretty interesting beer history of beer, I would say. Um, you're born and raised, Creston, is that right? Yeah, born and raised. Lived in Fernie a couple of years, uh, but came back. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm just noticing on my Zoom that uh, I have a gray background and I have a gray sweater on. So if I appear to be just a floating head, that's uh, that's my fault. Um, so I, I feel like with chatting with you and then also just kind of doing some research on you, you're almost destined to to own a brewery. Um, and you, and it seems like you're having a hell of a lot of fun doing it too. Yeah, for sure. Thinking back in my life, I've I've done a lot of things: construction. Uh, grocery industry, brewery for 20 years. Uh, my, my dad worked in uh, Labatt's for 42 years. Um, yeah, beer has actually been a big part of my life. Yeah. Uh, you know, thinking back six years, seven years ago, if I would ever, someone to ask me where you can ever open up a craft brewery, I'd say, no, that's way too much work. I'm, I'm happy at my union job and, <clears throat> you know, gonna retire you know uh just comfortably but yeah uh, here here i am yeah crazy yeah that's hilarious so so growing up before we talk about the brewery i i kind of want to get a sense of of you know what small town bc childhood looks like so when you were growing up um in creston what maybe describe your childhood did you did you play sports uh what what does one do out there sure yeah you bet you know creston uh surrounding population like with some of our outskirt little areas it's about 12 to fifteen thousand. so it's it's a decent size it's like in a little valley so the weather here is really great um i've always golfed i've played ball uh a lot of lake time we've kootenai lake 15 minutes away beautiful freshwater lake um one of the nicer ones we believe in bc uh, very little traffic on it compared yeah. to like the Okanagan or something like that. So we were always camping, um, hiking. Uh, back when I was a kid, I was an accomplished curler because um, I wasn't very good at hockey. So I had to pick some winter sport. Um, yeah. I dabbled in hockey a little bit, but uh, I think I broke my arm when I was in grade seven and that was my excuse to never play again. Yeah. Um, but I played men's rec hockey then, and I, uh, I've, I've always had a blast just yeah, doing things like that. Just like a normal upbringing. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the things you mentioned, this is, I guess, old, when you're a little bit older, but you said you always wanted to have a nightclub. <laughs> so is, yeah. is your brewery um, your nightclub? Uh, yeah, it's got to be now because, uh, yeah, I am way too old to own a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's funny. I, I think I brought it up to my wife couple of years ago and i said do you remember what you know everybody writes in their um their yearbook uh yeah. you know whatever some silly same underneath your picture or whatever and i think i wrote well i know i wrote uh i'll i'll own the, the best nightclub sometime in my life or whatever uh, yeah studio I, 54 yeah for sure uh yeah. this, this is close enough to me yeah i'm happy yeah. with that <laughs> yeah. absolutely it just took 30 some years to figure it out yeah, I'll take a brewery over a nightclub any day. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I think of Creston um, and I think of beer, obviously I think of of you now. But growing up, I would have thought of Kokanee. And so there's a pretty interesting history of of beer and brewing in your in your area. Um, and having grown up there in Creston. Is that a big part of of the of the town? Is is that uh, that brewery? And I guess you know what what was it then, and and what is it now? Uh, great question. Uh, yeah, growing up in Creston, I I have vivid memories, all awesome, of going to Labatt uh, picnics, um, hanging out with other kids that their parents worked at uh, the Columbia Brewery. Um, all of our friends, all of my mom and dad's friends, they all worked at Columbia Brewery. Um, Kokanee was, yeah, you grew up on, on Kokanee. Um, if you didn't take a case of Kokanee to a party, you were looked at quite funny. 
here just like what are you what are you drinking um so if you would have brought molson to a party you're pretty oh, much picking a fight or what you were definitely getting a fight that night for sure um yeah like that's is it was in our it's in our blood it was in our dna uh and back in the day our parents could just go to the brewery and grab cases of beer too um they had a free beer uh um agreement with the company and um, it was kind of not really police. So if you needed to go grab a couple cases of beer, you knew what door to go into. You walk in there. You... Now the government wants their taxes and stuff. They have like uh, visas that are yeah. good for beer and you have to go purchase it. But right. uh, yeah, growing up, it was it was a huge part of our life. Kokanee was a massive part of Creston. Now that it's more corporate and owned by Anheuser-Busch, it's a lot less. So a lot less donations a lot less visibility. Um, the brewery is still a very good employer in town. I've got still great friends at work there. Um, and they'll, they'll be around for a long time, yeah. which is really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it, and it's interesting because, uh, like I said, growing up, Kokanee was, it was kind of like you either were, uh, were a Molson Canadian drinker or a Kokanee drinker. And this is obviously before the, the craft beer kind of boom. Yeah. Um, you mentioned... I believe that your dad worked there um, yeah. for 40 years. Yeah. yeah. 42, I think. Yeah. yeah. He, he retired. Uh, oh, jeepers. Long, long time ago now. Yeah. Um, he was maintenance. So he was a millwright by trade. And then he ended up his last 15 years. He was a maintenance supervisor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great career there. Smart guy. Um, yeah. He helped me build houses my whole life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then you worked there for 20 years? 20 years, yeah. 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 And so I was, was in the union. Role? Yeah, I was in the union side. So um, first five years, you're kind of general labor. Yeah. Uh, I worked on the can line. And, you know, for all the craft beer uh, owners, uh, brewery owners, uh, um, they would be fascinated at some of the speeds I, I saw. Like, we would work uh, five to six days a week, 24 hours a day on the keg line and the keg line produced one keg a minute. Wow. Five to six days, <laughs> 24 hours a day. And that was just one brewery. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, I worked in the cellars. So in a big production brewery like that, there's a, there's a department called the cellars where they blend the higher alcohol beer with water and CO2. And then they send it to bright beer tanks. Um, Cause they do high gravity brewing at those breweries. Uh, for example, their brew kettle, I think, is 350 hectoliters. Wow. They do like 50 brews a week. <laughs> so my my whole year last year was one brew of their production. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I was in distribution for a long time. Uh, and then I finally uh, quit. Oh, four or five months before we opened Wild North. Okay. Just so there was a conflict. <laughs> yeah. there, there was a lot of heat on me at the time as well. So I, yeah. I thought I'd just leave peacefully. Absolutely. <clears throat> it's a, it's interesting when you talk about how your dad worked there and then you you came on. I remember when I was in university, I went to U of A in Edmonton and um, we had family friends where uh, the dad was you know part of the union and then the son uh, worked there and had a long career there as well. Um, and I went on, I, I was working at Molson as a summer student. I was going to business school and uh, I never continued on. I moved, I moved away from Edmonton and never pursued a kind of a career with Molson. But th these guys looked at me like I was out of my brain. Like it was such a good job and such a good living um, that, you know, it's, it's neat to see towns like that, that are kind of generational in that way. And, mm -hmm. uh, and like you said, the nice memories of growing up with the, with the picnics and stuff. I think there's something really yeah. cool about that. Oh, it's very generational in our town. It's losing it now, yeah. like with my generation. But uh, most of my friends' fathers and mothers worked at Labatt's. Yeah. Yeah. So it's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, some towns are mining towns. Other towns are brewing towns. What can I say? Yeah. Now, so let's talk about like why you started your brewery. One of the things, though, that makes me makes me wonder is, that feeling that you describe, is that something that you wanted to recreate by starting your own brewery? Was that connection to the community that you think um, that you thought was maybe um, not as present as it was um, when you were younger? 
Um, I, yeah, that feeling definitely evolved with my wife and I, um, when we started discussing our future, like, uh, I've always been a bit of a dreamer, mm -hmm. um, you know, construction, real estate, uh, oh, oh, should I buy that property and develop it? Um, and my wife, God bless her. She's followed me around with my wacky ideas for years. Thank God they've worked out some, <laughs> um, but uh, we would travel around and go to craft breweries and, and we just love the spaces and the people and the, and the bartenders and, you know, the, the team that you would meet and um, the conversations are definitely different than a bar. And we would always say Crescent sure would sure could use a craft brewery. Um, but then years later, it still took that long for us to <clears throat> decide, uh, you know, maybe we could do it. Right. Um, right. And then after doing it, after building it, uh, it has come true. Like it is a beautiful social space for uh, our Crestonites. Yeah. Yeah. So after 20 years working with Labatt, your wife didn't say, no, you've been in the beer industry long enough. <laughs> no, she didn't. She actually just told me one day, I think, I think these were her words, either stop talking about it, open right. up a craft brewery or shut up. Yeah. And work with the bats until you retire. Right. <clears throat> the, the building we're in now, I would drive by it every day. Yeah. Uh, on my home, my way home. And it was empty for a couple of years. And I, I probably weekly, I would say to her, man, that's the perfect spot. The yeah. absolute perfect spot. And finally she said, just do it. Uh, well, yeah. It's interesting because when I was driving through, so I did that road trip a couple weeks ago yeah. Um, and I visited a bunch of breweries, so I stopped in to say hi to you guys. Yeah. Uh, it's, it is literally the perfect location though, because as you're doing the, the, <clears throat> the trip along the highway, you know, every, every tourist, um, is driving by that. Right. So it, yeah. I'm surprised it was empty for that long, but yeah, you guys have a beautiful location. Yeah. Thank you. No, it worked out really nice. It was the old bus depot. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. So then we just added on to it and, uh, yeah, it, it, it couldn't have worked out any better i think yeah, yeah. um so and then i would say also i, I need to visit it in the summertime because the patio looked like it was uh did mm. you build that yourself oh like the the roof yeah yeah um, yeah that roof was there it was uh square and um it had uh white softened fascia on it yeah. but uh, cover architecture at a nelson developed the curve yeah and, and brought in the wood look um, since I was doing most of the construction, when I saw that, I was like, Oh, oh you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. You, excuse me. Do you know how much work that is? Yeah. <laughs> no, my friends and partners, they're like, that's a great idea though. Sorry, you're going to do the work, but, um, yeah, it was a nice vision on their part. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful room for sure. Yeah. So when you, okay. So, cause you started this, you're, you're in business with your wife. Is that right? Yeah, that's a funny story too. So she basically shut up or, you know, get on the horse and get going on this. I said, yeah. well, the thing that's been holding me back for so many years is my, my, I have a really good job. Um, great benefits, great pension. Uh, if I quit, you need to stay at your full-time good job. And she's like, yes, I will. She's, she worked in the pharmacy industry. Right. And, uh, um, she's like, okay, yeah, you, I was going to run it, do the numbers. I think I was going to make pizza at one time, run the tap room. Um, it didn't take long. Like we were open. Basically we opened in May and I think she put her notice in to quit her job in midsummer. She's like, I, I can't do this. Like this is, this is, will be a team effort for sure. And nice. Yeah, we go to work together every day. We get along great. Um, she does the numbers, the planning, the HR. Um, I think I just run around. People ask me like what I do every day. I think I just run around. And I was going to ask you. Start fires and put yeah. them out. At the same time. Yeah. You start them, she puts them out. Kind of. Yeah. And then yeah. I, I'm always a pest with the brewer. And um, yeah, so uh, I, th I think I'm productive. But So know. what is it? I, that was going to be one of my questions. Though. Like what is... It's, it's, I always find it interesting, especially when you go into business, either with a close friend or, you know, in your case, your, your wife, 
um, so, who is hopefully also a close friend. But um, how, how I always find it interesting how people define their roles, like like how it how it comes about. So, like, what is your role in the company? I, you mentioned that you have a brewer. So, did you ever have intentions of of maybe brewing yourself, or how did you kind of find your role within the company? Um, yeah, great uh, question. I thought the role opening was going to be a lot different than it is now. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sales. I do deliveries, uh, maintenance of the building. I'll run the tap room from time to time. That's where we met. I was running the tap room that totally. one day. Um, uh, yeah, I'll do events, um, clean kegs. I was there early this morning, cleaning kegs, uh, testing tanks tomorrow. I'll be canning beer. Um, yeah, uh, I brewed all this last summer because we lost our, our original brewer. Right. Um, he went on to do different things in his life. And so I was kind of stuck with the old, uh, brewer's paddle. And, uh, that's, what's great about the industry. Everybody in the Kootenays I reached out to came and helped and brewed for me, right. um, for a long time. And then taught me, you know, how to drive the bus and, and get the product out the door, but I knew, um, I knew brewing's not, it's not in my heart. Right. I'm not creative enough. I'm not a visionary that way. I'm a visionary on where the company should go, I think, but not how the beer should be made. Right. So we found Zach uh, three or four months ago. And uh, so he's brewing for us now again. So, yeah. So what, what would your vision be in terms of like, so when you started, did you have an idea of what types of beers that you wanted to produce? And it's interesting because how do you kind of marry what your vision is with, with a brewer? Cause oftentimes a brewer wants to kind of take the ball and run with it. Right. So, so how do you guys kind of work together and what was the original vision for that? The original vision. And we took where we were, uh, really to heart, um, you know, a coconut town, an easy drinking town. Um, you know, we knew we'd have to have like a, some transition beers. So, you know, easy drinking lager and then maybe like a, a golden ale, you know, to graduate and yeah. a few nice IPAs. Um, and then, uh, we're proud that we always have a Porter on the, on the lineup. A lot of people don't carry a Porter. Um, and then, uh, raspberry sour, like we introduced Creston to raspberry sour and, it's one of our number one sellers. Um, but it's funny, like our, our, yeah, so that was our main lineup. Um, we kept with it for a long time and now we have Zach on board and, and he wants to go in a different direction in regards to, well, let's keep some of those core beers, but let's, let's attack a ton of rotators. Now let's see what, let's push the envelope. Let's see what people really want to drink around here. Mm. Uh, so he's great that way. Like he's produced, uh, you know, dark check lager, a ghost, um, a wild Saison. Uh, he just made, um, oh, he just made a, a session ale, a Nordic session ale. Uh, so delicious. And it's funny. So when he releases a new beer, um, they're just about our number one seller for two or three weeks. So he's right. Like people want different. They, they want the excitement. They come in, they're like, what do you got next? What what's right. going on here? Like they, but then still we have our true fans of Wild North, and they'll come in and just drink the lager. Yeah, um, they love the space, and uh, or they'll just drink the IPAs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so where did Zach come from? Um, he was a head brewer at Mighty Peace up in Fort Saint John. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. So what yeah. attracted him to Creston? Um, weather. <laughs> <laughs> uh his sister lives in Cranbrook. Yeah. And yeah, I think he just needed to change the pace in his life. Um, it was a bit of a larger brewery. Yeah. Um, not a lot of uh creativity with his trade. Um, so he's made an uh he told me the other day he's made more rotators now just being in Creston for a few months than he ever did at nice. Mighty Peace. Um so now he can actually feel creative and feel his trade and we got along really well when we started talking to each other um yeah and he loves the outdoors uh so i think he's really liking it here nice it is the balance between especially to you know keep a, a brewer engaged i find is you know you want those staples you want those core beers but they also they need to be able to you know be creative to kind of you know push their own kind of 
limits of, of what they can do. So I feel like you guys have gotten that balance pretty good. I think we do. There's like, and I think we, we've been very open and honest with each other. Like I'll push them in the business side of it. Like, well, let's keep costs down. Let's, let's make sure that we're on task for our canning days. And uh, he pushes my limits with, yeah, yeah. Um, why don't we brew this tomorrow? <laughs> so and it's yin and yang, right? And if you can yeah. find that balance, um, I think it really works. And I think we are finding it. Nice. Um, so I was joking earlier saying that uh, you growing up, um, if you would have brought Molson to a party, uh, you might be getting in a fight. What is it like now? Are people able to bring your beer to a party or is it... Uh... Because well, now, sure. you're the, now you're the now you're the second uh, brewery in town. Yeah, yeah. There, you know what? There's still um, a lot of uh, interesting feelings with some of the people that still work there and what I did um, because there's such a loyalty to uh, that brewery, the big one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're they're coming around, which is nice. There's some management come and drink in my place. Um, yeah. They buy four packs. They're like, your beer's good. Our beer's good. Your beer's good. It's mm -hmm. a beer industry. Um, so it is changing, which is nice. No, yeah, like we sell our beer everywhere in town. I think it's well received. Um, yeah, so I, I think uh, people have opened up their arms. Uh, you know, we support tons of local events and charities just like they do. And uh, yeah, I think we're coexisting in the town really good. So, and speaking of coexisting, I, I feel like, you know, that area, so the Kootenai area and just kind of that area of BC, the, the powder highway kind of thing, um, lots of really cool breweries. So where, when we went, we went um, through Golden, um, so White Tooth, uh, then to Revy to Mount Bagby, um, then Nelson and Creston and Fernie. So visiting all the breweries along the way. Um, in Nelson, I didn't realize, you know, how many breweries they had, like it was, it was yeah. crazy. Yeah. Um, how do you guys, would you say that you guys have a, like, what is your relationship with all of those breweries? You mentioned that you did get a lot of help when you were starting. Um, is it a unique beer culture with all of you guys? Yeah, we all get along great. Um, like for example, when we were opening up, uh, one phone call to Brent at Backroads when, mm -hmm. uh, hey, my name's Craig. I'm opening up a brewery in Creston. I think I am. Can you help me? Absolutely, he says. Well, what do you need? Yeah. Oh, this is this is who you call. This is this this will cost you this much, maybe. A um, couple visits with Brent and uh, going over their numbers and things like that. Uh, Hayden and Mary at Taylor Brewing in Castlegar were huge helps. Um, with because uh, they opened a year before us right um uh let's see fisher peak uh jordan and heidi from fisher peak and cranbrook huge help uh the whole industry i think if i would have phoned anybody i think i phoned um a couple places in uh the okanagan as well everybody answered your phone angry hand down um down in castle helped us out uh it's a great industry when i lost our brewer um couple frantic phone calls and I, I was, I didn't miss a brew. They're yeah. like, we'll, we'll be there. We'll help you out. Um, so it, it's been fabulous. It's, it's wow. a great industry. We always visit each other's breweries when we're doing deliveries or driving by. Um, I'll phone somebody up and say, Hey, I'm come going this way. Do you need any beer delivered? Yeah. You know what? That would be great. Um, and then some, some bar owners are like, uh, you're delivering, not your beer. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. no worries. Um, sometimes they kind of feel guilty. They're like, well, we didn't order yours. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, I'm helping the friend out. Um, yeah, so it's great. Yeah. The, you know, the fact that you worked at Labatt and you <laughs> saw just the volumes that they went through, does that help give you perspective? You know, it, it, to me, it makes me think, well, when you see the volume that they're going through, you realize that you're really not competing with other craft brewers that, you know, that you can help them because even collectively, you know, what you guys are producing, you know, isn't really coming close to what they're producing out of that brewery, which is, is in a way it's exciting. It knows that, you know, that there is really no limit to what is, is possible for you um, when you look out to the future. No, you're right. There's no ceiling. Yeah. Um, the volumes that I saw, 
uh, go out of the distribution center that I worked at the last three and a half years um, was staggering. You know, the pallets and pallets of, of beers. And from, say, five or six years ago, the Labatt portfolio then versus now, they're purchasing craft breweries. They're selling craft beer. Well, in their eyes, it's craft beer. Um, and uh, you can see those volumes starting to pick up. So for us to ever think that there'd be like a limit of, of our capacity, yeah, you're, you're mistaken that it's a enormous market. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the neat thing I think about the market in craft is like, there's not a lot of loyalty. So like you'll go into a, a really nice craft beer market or store and, Oh, I've never tried that one. I'll grab that. Oh, mm -hmm. that one looks cool. I'll grab that. You know, everybody knows. Then you kind of get a feel of, you know, what's good and what's bad out there. Right. Yeah, it's me. I, I, my theory of, in terms of loyalty is I feel like the, the important thing is to, is to create that emotional connection. I feel like when you see a wall of beer and, you know, it's just like, oh man, there's so many choices. I feel like people gravitate to the breweries where they feel like they know the people behind it. Um, and that's, you know, it's a similar to if you know a chef, you, for some yeah. reason you want to bring your friends to that restaurant and you want to kind of share that story. I feel that that's the connection um, in craft beer that people need to make is, you know, it's not necessarily what are your IBUs and, you know, what is this, what is that? It's, it's you know, connecting and sharing your story and that's how you will build loyalty. Do you, do you agree with that? Totally agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's a connection. There's a connection with every beer that's cracked. Yeah. Um, you'll most likely somebody in the room will like, oh, what's that one? Uh, where'd you get that beer? You know, and yeah. then there's a little bit of a story there. Yeah, totally. And even just, you know, there's something special about, you know, being in the mountains and enjoying, you know, there's so many opportunities to enjoy beer, whether it's after a bike ride, a hike and stuff like that. And so, you know, connecting your brand to those memories, I think is, is important too. Even as a company, like our, you know, our passion for, for doing festivals, you know, in, in places, like obviously we're going to be doing it in Revy. Uh, we do it in Jasper and Banff. It's just, there's something special about, you know, being in those outdoor areas and drinking beer. So uh, I'm, oh, I'm sure, sure. I, you know, and for yourself, I mean, as a, as a tourist destination, it must be um, like, what, what does that like, was that part of the business plan when you started knowing that, um, you know, there's going to be tourists coming into town? For sure. It was a huge part of our business. Um, we, we rely heavily on the four months of the tourism. Creston's a bit of a sleepy town in the winter time, but, uh, lately it's actually really growing up. We have live music every weekend in this town. Um, people are starting to come out a lot more. But yeah, it was definitely in our business portfolio. Like we double sales in the summer. Yeah. And then, you know, in the winter time, we, uh, we're just getting by. Yeah. Um, which is fine. Yeah. You mentioned you spent a couple years in Fernie. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. With uh, Overy Foods. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I go to Fernie quite often, especially in the summertime to do bike, uh, to, you know, get some mountain biking in. But um like when you look at what Fernie Brewing has done, is that, is that somewhat of a, of a model for, for you? I, I, like what I, what I think is really cool about them is, you know, they're, they're popular outside of Fernie, but they've really, they're really popular. They really are supported locally, which I think is really cool. Cause sometimes I feel like small towns go out of their way not to support <laughs> like yeah. local for whatever yeah. reason, you know? So uh, when you go to Fernie and you see that support that they have, was that something that, that you modeled yourself? Oh, for sure. Like I, I look up at, uh, I look towards Murray, the owner. Um, uh, yeah, like, uh, he's done everything right. Um, you know, him and his father, uh, you know, they, they engulfed their brand around, you know, a town that they love. And then it's just grown immensely, uh, mm -hmm. from there. Um, yeah, like every time I go there, I'll stop in and have a beer. I'll text them. Hey, I'm in your tap room. He'll come down and bullshit with me. Um, usually, we'll, I'll, usually I'll pick his brain. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's always very helpful with a little bit of knowledge here and there. He's like, oh, Craig, no, you got to you gotta look at the business this way. Uh, right. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Um, yeah. He stopped in our, our brewery when he was on a camping trip 
this summer. We had some pints together on my deck. Um, but yeah, Fernie, they've done it right. Uh, any ski town, any, any cool pub, they're there. Um, and they're huge. They're, uh, they are someone that I look to. Yeah. Yeah. No, they're great. You mentioned in your notes that you and your wife, I think you worked 250 days straight, 10 to 12 hours a day. Yeah. Um, did you realize that that's what it was going to take to build this thing? No, that was a huge <laughs> surprise. Um, yeah, and that was a massive surprise. Uh, we, I, I opened the place up with Lisa and, um, you know, we, uh, we had some support right at the start with some, some free labor and stuff. And then we thought we were graduating to a real company. when We hired our first server, our first team member out in the tap room, Becca. And, um, so Becca worked a lot as well. And then, I don't know, I think the summer went by and Lisa said, do you know how many days in a row you've worked? I'm like, no, I have no idea. It's just a blur. You know, you're there in the morning, hosing the deck off, checking with the beer and delivering. Yeah. And, you know, um, you're, yeah, it was amazing. That just flew by. We look back now going, how did we do that? Yeah. We actually don't even know how we did it. Yeah. Um, now it's a lot better. We, it, but owning a place, it's, it's so hard not to be there. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not a trust thing. It's just a, you just want to be there and you want to visit with the people in your tap room and you want, yeah, you just want to make sure everybody's enjoying the space. And yeah. Well, even, you know, even like, you know, in order to delegate, you have to know how to do the job though too. Right. So it's, 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 you can't just give somebody a job without having yeah. kind of that role defined. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's almost, you, you almost have no choice, but to at least, know how to do it and then hand it off. Right. So it's, uh, it's a lot harder. I feel like a lot of people romanticize what owning a brewery would be like. Um, and so that kind of puts it into perspective. Like you have to be willing to, um, to do that, you know, willing to, you know, literally put in the 250 days in a row if, if needed. Yeah. Yeah. We, we get that a lot. People romanticizing about it when they're, when it's a really busy afternoon and exactly. They're like, yeah, that's oh, when they see you. Right. Yeah. You're killing it here. I'm like, I'm exhausted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's busy. Yes. We're having a good time, but it's a lot of work. Nobody sees the behind the scenes work. Or no one sees you like, you know, that's a Friday or Saturday afternoon kind of thing. Right. It's not a, you know, a Tuesday afternoon or what have you. Totally, so like it's, a Monday. Yeah. yeah. And you get 15 customers in all day. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. But uh, you stay open those days too, because you want to stay open for those 15 loyal customers yeah, um, because they love your space. Absolutely. Yeah. So with that in mind, what, what would you, do you have advice? Like, and have people come to you, you know, you mentioned how much help that you were given. Have you had the opportunity to, to kind of pay that forward? Have people come to you with ideas of, I want to start a brewery. And, and if so, what advice uh, do you give them? Yeah. Um, yeah. We have already paid it forward. Uh, Encore Brewing Company in Cranbrook's set to open here in April. Okay. Um, and uh, they reached out to us early on a year or so ago. And we've had meetings, visits, uh, explain to them, you know, who we got to do this work. And they've actually hired these people as well. Um, uh, what what programs we use, you know, you know, profit margins, you, sh you share those just a little bit. Uh, and then and a couple other companies have emailed us or phoned us and we always reply to those emails. Yeah. Um, the advice, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun, but it's consuming. It yeah. consumes you. Like my Lisa and I, there's rarely a day where we're not sitting at home having coffee or having a relaxing hot tub on the deck or something and not talking about how we could be better at the brewery. Yeah. Um, and then we also try to follow that up with, we have to stop doing this. Like, can we just <laughs> shut our brains off? I don't yeah. know now if it's ever going to be possible. Yeah. Um, so just to be aware of that, right? It's not bad. Um, but be very aware that uh, it, it will be, it will be your life yeah. for sure for the rest of your life. Yeah. So when you think about, you know, the challenges that, <clears throat> that you went through, so how many, 
when did you first open the brewery? Um, uh, probably eighteen months ago. Eighteen right months during ago. the COVID, of course. Right. Uh, everybody was shut down and decks only. Um, yeah. Is this May will be our second birthday? So, you know, COVID was its own kind of thing, and I feel like I've belabored the point uh, in terms of talking about COVID. But even coming out of COVID, and you think, okay, well, you know, it's going to get better. And but in a lot of ways, you know, there's so many um, repercussions. I don't know if it's directly related to COVID, but you think about supply chains and inflation and all these things for you, what, what have been some of the biggest challenges that you guys have been facing, you know, since you guys opened? Um, the biggest challenges for us probably is our location, uh, being beautiful. We are remote. So no trucking companies, um, basically do a direct delivery to Creston. Um, anything from the coast gets dropped off in Castlegar, then cross docked, and uh, then sent to Creston the next day. Sometimes actually goes through Creston on a big truck to Cranbrook, gets cross docked, and then back to Creston. Uh, yeah. Um, nice. So cost of shipping is absolutely outrageous for us. So anytime we can share a fruit order with the um, Roslyn Brewing Company or Backroads or Tailout, we'll phone them up and do that. Right. Um, shipping's massive. Um, you know, we haven't had the manpower issues that big restaurants will have, you know, we only need a small team, right. Which is, which is great. Um, but yeah, like just probably yeah, shipping and trying to figure out and, you know, you know, figuring out your costs and nothing is, I guess with a brewery, nothing is, you know, you know, what your costs are going to be next month and your sales, it's always fluctuating. Yeah. Um, which, you know, and that's what that's what's fun about the industry as well. Yeah. yeah. So you, I had an idea of, I have an idea of what your vision was to start, but when you look at it now, do you have the ability to look say five years from now and, and imagine what, where you want to be? What, what does your distribution look like? And, you know, is it mostly out of your tap room at that point? Would you want to be across BC? What's, what's your vision? Yeah. Good question. Um, it's funny. So our, our very first vision as a group, was 200 kilometer radius of Preston. Um, let's do a really good job. When people come into the Kootenays, they know Wild North is there and um, the beer is excellent. Uh, well, we've since grown from that 200 kilometer radius. Uh, we're in the Okanagan now. Um, nice. Vernon and Picton, Kelowna. Um, tap room sales. We always would wish our tap room sales are more. Um, than they are, but Preston is a smaller town, um, but they are fine. They're good. Uh, five years from now, uh, yeah, you know what? We would love a bumping tap room and, you know, more youthful exuberance, um, people wanting, yearning to show up there. And yeah, I'd say less uh, wholesale. I, I would love to only just, you know, sell the beer in the tap room and not drive across go into the Okanagan once a month, but that's part of the business too, because yeah. we get tourism from the Okanagan and they're like, Oh, we, we buy your beer in Kelowna. I'm like, oh, yeah. that's cool to hear I, that. That's really neat. But I don't think we will ever see us like a container world that, you know, people in Vancouver can buy our beer. It's just, that just doesn't make sense. I think as a, as a small brewery. Right. BC seems like an interesting province in a way i feel like there's almost a divide um in terms of you know you can only penetrate it so far in terms and i maybe that's maybe i'm wrong to think that but you know a lot of the breweries again doing that you know that the tour um a lot of the breweries that i visited you know they do really well in you know in in alberta and in in the mountains Kind of thing, but it's almost easier to penetrate that way than it is to penetrate kind of the Vancouver and Victoria and stuff like that. Is that yeah. fair to say? I think so. Um, so far, like Cologne has been great with us, right? Um, because you know, I'll go to a store and they're like, Oh, a new brewery that is cool. And sometimes you get that and yeah. you're like, Oh, that's all that's what they're saying, but they're like, Oh, like because we have so many here, we actually are yearning for a different selection, 
like a different um because i think they have 20 i don't know 22 or 26 breweries in Kelowna. um oh really yeah it's, wow. it's, it's huge um so those markets are good to us yeah i don't know about the vancouver market that there's such killers say like calgary market yeah. the calgary beer scene is off the charts um one day i think that's one of our goals though is to actually uh list some products in alberta um one of my good friends and partners in the company lives there and i think that's his dream is to go to a store and <laughs> buy some beer that uh, he owns partnership in the company um but yeah it, i'd say there's a bit of a divide yeah, yeah for sure um so y- you mentioned in terms of mentors you mentioned your wife which i think is is really cool because um you know, when you're in business with family, it can go one of two ways, right? So it's good to see that you guys have such a, a positive relationship. What is it about her in terms of business that, that you look up to? Ah, she's just well put together. Like, um, I, I say often to her, like, the more she's around me, you know, the dumber I get because she's just so good at doing everything. Like, I'll ask her a question and she'll be like, I have no idea, but I'll figure it out. Um, And she's great with numbers. She's great with just kind of planning, keeping things on track, keeping me calm. Um, You know, because I sometimes will fly off the handle at home and no, let's not do this. This is too much work. And she's like, we need to do it. Uh, We will do it this way. This is where we'll start. Um, I'm like, okay, you're right. Uh, (laughs) And she's always right with that. Um, She, if you know, she were to apply to a, to a company to run it or to do some, they'd be dumb not to hire her. She's just, she's killer. And then, yeah, like, and I got my work ethic growing up from my parents. Right. Um, and same with Lisa too. She comes from a farm background. Um, yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, you, you know that you need to put a good day's work in. Yeah. But yeah, if I could be a, a percentage of Lisa, um, I would. Yeah, for sure. I'm sure nice. she gets very tired of listening to all my crap. <laughs> hey, it's part of the deal, man. Um, <laughs> so hopefully you guys do get some time off these days. If you are not working, what are you doing? Um, used to be golf for me. I love to golf like 50 to 60 rounds a year. Oh, nice. Um, we uh, used to own a boat, so we used to always go boating, but we got rid of it um lisa just got into fly fishing oh nice so last last spring all of a sudden she's like i'm gonna start fly fishing and i was like what you've never expressed interest in your life are you having like a mental breakdown what's going on she's like no (laughs) i love how fly fishing equates mental breakdown yeah so um yeah fly rod all the equipment then all of a sudden we're driving to these little rivers and hanging out um So, yeah, and she's kind of gotten me into it a little bit now, too. We were actually just in Fernie on the weekend. She bought a new fly rod at the fly shop there. She's got the waders. Um, So you'll probably see us doing a lot of fly fishing this summer. Um, I love it. It is peaceful. You'll take a couple of beer with you, sit on the rocks, just hang out. It is, uh, and that's why she's awesome. Like, she's pushing me. Um, She's she's probably doing it because she knows I need it mentally. Yeah. But I, I love golfing with my friends, having a few beers, um, just relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. There is something rela- certainly relaxing about fly fishing. If it's uh if it's a calm day, if it's a windy day, it's anything but relaxing yeah. as you're trying to untangle everything. Um, yeah. Is there fly fishing? You mentioned Fernie. Is there fly fishing out where you guys are in Creston? Yeah. Yeah. We're surrounded. Yeah. Um, we drive 20 minutes. It's called like the goat river. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're, we're in a beautiful little secluded uh, hole. Nobody even knows you're down in there. And there's little itsy bitsy fish that you catch and release. Um, and then uh, there's beautiful freshwater lakes all over Creston area. And then, yeah, we could drive to Castlegar, the Columbia River. Then we have the Kootenai River. Um, we were just in Fernie talking to a couple of guides on the weekend. And uh, they were like, oh, you got to come up here. Yeah. Um, there's all these interesting spots here. So yeah, we're excited to, you know, broaden our fishing horizon a little bit this summer. Yeah. That's awesome. 
Um, so obviously with, you know, summer coming up, it's minus 30 here today. So you wouldn't know that summer is coming up, but, yeah. um, so people are coming to Crest and they got fly fishing is mountain biking a big thing there. Now mountain I'm just biking. planning, I'm just planning my own vacation now. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah, you can definitely mountain bike here, <clears throat> but you need to know people in Crest and they don't have any real public, um, advertised trails right now but they are getting there oh good so there's a society now um they're like hey let's let's get some grant money let's let's uh get some trails going if you know the right people yeah there's some beautiful trails in creston yeah absolutely so i know just from you know everything that you've talked about and all the notes you gave me um you're super close with your family you have two children is that right yeah yeah and they're, yeah. they're, they're adult children. They're oh older. yeah, for sure. Uh, Larissa and Jordan, uh, Lisa and I got married at a young age yeah. and, uh, we immediately had kids. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, they're old, which is, which is great because we can hang out with them. Larissa lives in Victoria. Yeah. Uh, Jordan still lives in Creston here. Um, yeah, no, it's good. Jordan beats me in golf now, which sucks. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, Larissa's a, a school teacher. She's moving to the Coonies um, with her partner this summer, which we're excited for. Nice. Um, yeah, so it, it, it's nice that we had the kids at such a young age. So now we're quite healthy and we can hang out and have fun. Totally. Any plans on them taking over the family business? You know, I doubt it. Uh, Jordan's expressed a little bit of brewing. Um, you know, maybe I'll go to brew school. Maybe I'll hang out. He's brewed with me a few times through the summer. Right. He helps with deliveries. He'll help in the tap room a little bit. Yeah. Um, hey, that's always there for them. If uh, if if they want to dive into it, you know, I'll warn them how much work it is. And then <laughs> yeah, yeah, no um, doubt. But they're all fans of craft beer, so we'll go to Victoria and we'll hang out. And, Go to nice. all the beautiful craft breweries there, uh, yeah, hang out at Phillips and all, all the good ones. But uh, yeah, who knows? I'm not sure. That's cool. Um, so the next time that I see you will be in Revy. So we're doing the Revy Beer Fest together. Um, like I said, the, my my favorite thing about doing beer festivals, and especially you know the mountain ones, is just really connecting in special ways with with the brewers and connecting guests in special ways. Um, we were just finishing, we just finished our Jasper show and, you know, getting to, you know, take guests on hikes with the brewers and the distillers and, and just, you know, sampling product out in the woods and, and sharing stories. It's just, to me, it's so special. So, you know, getting to be out in Revy, um, hopefully get to do some skiing with you guys and, and stuff like that. I think it just makes for a really unique setting to, to really create those, connections with guests so um and i had so much fun just doing the tour and, and visiting all the breweries i think there's so much unique beer culture um in the mountain towns that you know through this festival we're going to be able to kind of showcase so i appreciate yeah. you guys supporting us um you know us having never done the revy show before and uh, you guys being relatively new i know it's a kind of a leap of faith but we're we're excited to to help share your story Oh, thank you. Uh, we're excited to be there as well. We, um, I, I, you know, when you guys stopped by the brewery and you left, uh, I poked my head into the office and I said to Lisa, I said, Oh, great interaction. Um, yeah, have you ever thought we should go do the Revy beer fest? And she's yeah. like, well, and that's why she's a rock star. She was on it. She's like, let me look it up. Blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah. And, and, uh, you know, that little interaction in our, in our tap room created a story um and that's what the industry is all about we're very excited to be there too i think it's the end of the month right yeah yeah it's yeah. in uh, march 31st april 1st so uh yeah it's it's coming up close but yeah and and for us like i mean that's what i think is one of the perks of my job is just getting out there and, and meeting the breweries and, and seeing and you know in that tour you mentioned brent um from Backroads in nelson you know i sat down with him we did a podcast together um, I talked to Jeff, the brewer at Fernie Brewing, who, who I've known for quite a long time. Uh, we sat down with the guys at White Tooth um, oh, yeah. in, uh, yeah. in Golden. And it's just, you know, it's every tap room is different. You know, there's no, you don't walk into two tap rooms and be like, oh, this is just like this, like Fernie and you guys. And, and so it's just fun to share those stories because each town um, 
you know, how you guys look at beer and how you guys approach the community um, is different. And that's kind of, you know, mm-hmm. reflected in, in everything that you guys do. So it, for us, it's, it's cool to be able to help uh, share those stories. So um, yeah, it's a, it's a, probably a tough job for you. It's a tough job in that uh, it's, you certainly have to learn how to balance it. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah you have to yeah. say, Hey, yeah. yeah, get out for the odd run or something like that. But um, yeah. no, it, it's a labor of love. And uh, yeah, we've been good. in it for 20 years and we, we love wow. it as much now as we yeah. did then. So um, that's good. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, I look forward to meeting Lisa. I have been emailing with her. So yeah. hopefully, uh, hopefully she's happy with my updates. You know, they can get wordy. So. <laughs> That's okay. I, I get made fun of for maybe emailing too much, but uh, <laughs> communication is key. Um, yes. Anyway, I appreciate it. And um, yes. yeah, thanks Thank for, you. thanks for sharing your story and uh, we'll see you in Revy safe travels and bring yeah. your skis. Yeah, for sure. I could. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. See you soon. Thanks, man. Take, Take care. care.